Beijing realizes it's on the back foot, so it's trying to contain the damage, both at home and abroad. First, let's talk about what's happening inside China. The coronavirus outbreak has dealt a big blow to the Chinese economy. China has seen its first downturn in 40 years and its worst downturn in 60 years. The Chinese economy has contracted by 6.8%. It has shrunk. Something like this was last seen in the 1960s. So the problem is serious. The collapse had a direct impact on employment, jobs. According to a report in Bloomberg, 8 million people in China lost their jobs in the month of February alone. This is an estimate, I must say. The reality could be much different and much worse. Two days ago, the Communist Party of China revealed its post-coronavirus strategy. What are they going to do? The Politburo is a group of 24 party members. They run the party and they rule the country. The Chinese state media reported about a meeting of this Politburo. It reveals the concept of six ensures or six guarantees. This is the list of policy priorities for China. Right at the top is unemployment. Job losses, job loss is the biggest worry for China right now. Other priorities are resuming trade, the supply chain, food and energy security and functioning of the grassroots. Why are we talking about this list? Because this is a roadmap. This is an instruction to the party members and to the bureaucracy in China. This will be the domestic priority of China in the near future. So at home, it's all about job creation. What about the world outside? How does China plan to deal with others? The strategy is clear. Aggressive and combative diplomacy. Whenever China is questioned, it responds with a denial. It didn't happen, they say. Now, those denials are not working. So China is resorting to bluster and misinformation to deflect blame. Let me give you the latest example. It's very interesting. For weeks, we've been talking about how the world must make China pay. Well, now the demand is caught on. Beijing kept ignoring it. Now it has started retorting. Spokespersons from the Chinese foreign ministry are flat out denying the need for reparations. On Monday, the Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson appeared before the media to issue one more denial. But the briefing did not go as per plan. I'll tell you why. First, listen to the statement. Viruses are common enemies of all mankind and can appear anywhere in the world at any time. China, like other countries, has been hit by the virus. China is a victim, not an accomplice of the virus. In the face of a major public health crisis and the threat of an infectious disease, the international community should unite and work together, instead of blaming each other or even clamoring for accountability and claims. In my memory, there has been no such accountability in the world. In 2009, H1N1 influenza broke out in a large area in the United States and spread to 214 countries and regions, causing nearly 200,000 deaths. Did anyone ask the United States to pay for it? In the 1980s, AIDS was first found in the United States and has now spread all over the world. I don't know how many people in the world suffer from AIDS. Has anyone found the United States to blame? Has anyone blamed the United States for AIDS? That's China for you, playing the victim card and getting the facts all wrong. China says no one demanded accountability before. So why is it happening now? Why is the world asking them questions? It's a poor argument and a very poor strategy. It has no feet to stand on. The Chinese should do some research before making such claims. We'll do them a favor this time. Here are the facts. Claim number one, the H1N1 pandemic in 2009 began in America. That's wrong. According to multiple reports, including the most authoritative medical journal in the world, The Lancet, the H1N1 virus emerged in Mexico. Claim number two, China says that AIDS was first found in America. Again, wrong. The earliest known case of HIV AIDS was detected way back in 1959 from a man in Congo. That's in Africa, just in case. Claim number three, the 2008 financial crisis. The Chinese spokesperson, Geng Shuang, said nobody held America accountable for the financial crisis. I won't say this is wrong because this is plain ridiculous. 
and I'll be happy to explain why. The 2008 financial crisis was not a pandemic, it was a financial crisis. Unlike China, America did not try to cover it up. It did not try to hide the patients, in this case, those affected by the crisis. Nor did it try to silence the whistleblowers. It is not the same. But since China is digging up the past, we have a fit case where accountability should have been sought. The 2003 SARS outbreak, the world suffered, remember? This too began in China. And in this case too, China tried a cover-up. It's a matter of record. Had the world acted firmly, China would not have tried the same trick 17 years later. SARS affected more than 20 countries. The world did not make China pay. The coronavirus pandemic has reached 185 countries. If the world doesn't make China pay even now, it should prepare for another pandemic.